This five move full body training should be part of your regimen every single day. First move, let's say we start with something that everybody can do, but it may expose some weak links and that's okay too. A little personal history, I pretty much only use stances as my foundation and this becomes a basic for single leg squats all the way to single leg flips. And we get every student we have on this from kids, beginners, advanced, and especially adults online. I've got a pretty cool method for determining correct alignment with all this stuff based on my background in painting the human figure realistically, as well as biomechanics from martial arts and acrobatic training. For the bow stance, it's five and a half foot lengths. You start here, we're going toes, heels, toes. Normally we put the heels back for the horse stance right here and then the arms go out, the knees push outwards like this. All right, just rock solid like granite on these stances. And then we'll be out again. Then we bring our body to one side and this is the bow stance. So it's like we're, like we're pulling back a bow, okay? This leg is straight, this is bent. Toes are going all one direction and this is just rock solid here, you should feel it in the crook of your hip. If you're going along with this right now, trying this and you're holding this, you already feel it, boom. And then the arms are engaged, the back is engaged. Sometimes it's difficult for people to get down into this position with the leg parallel to the ground and the toes, the heels both on the ground, this leg straight. This is so structural. I can't stress enough the rigidity for the rest of your body that you're building through stances. I suppose I should talk about this topic in the future, but suffice it to say, we'll keep this as part of our full body training for today. Now, when I say full body, I don't mean what many people do. They'll call it body building, but it's really body part building. And sometimes people say they do full body training, but in reality, it's single body part training. They just do all of it in one day. Now, when I say full body, I don't mean body parts. I literally mean full body. It's the difference between trudging along through fitness and athleticism, as well as truly mastering your body as a human being. And the rationale is very simple. It's how we're designed. We aren't a single arm attached to a brain. In my experience, single body part training is reserved for rehabilitation after surgery. That's about it. We are full body. Neurons and mind are the most important pieces in my opinion. Training full body builds athleticism, coordination, balance, and dexterity, which unifies the body into much greater strength and power than training things individually. So just for this simple bow stance, your back, core, arms, and legs are all active. And then what we do is we drop all the way down to the snake stance. Stances like this, again, are my foundation and uh, they build up to every other strength and skill that you want to attain. Uh, I think they're far superior to weightlifting, even to heavy weights, uh, being able to get to this kind of mobility and strength here. Ideally, we wanna be able to just drop into the snake stance like this, and this will blow up a lot of people's knees. Knees way beyond the toes, full compression in the leg and we're using our core to stabilize everything else. And you'll see our students all doing this. People like Matt, PJ, Che, Patrick, people of all ages doing stances in their katas, especially foundation, handstand, power moves, and free run katas. Not so much ninja strength or circ because that involves something to hang from. And what I'm showing you today is gonna build into a little sequence like what you're seeing here. Now we'll call this a Dyna combo for you today. Now my wife actually said that we should turn this into a 30 day challenge. Just don't go blow yourself up. Screens aren't a substitute for a sensei. Third move is super simple. Just a slide to the front side while quietly putting your hands down. You wanna be silent like a ninja. This means you aren't flopping on the ground. You're controlling your body and alert, listening, not drowning out life with headphones and barbells. Oftentimes, again, when we're low down here, the mobility in the knee, the strength, and the quads and glutes, even your calf, muscles on the side of the calf, your foot for balance and stability. So all of these things come into play. And the completion of this move sweeps the leg all the way to the backside, putting both feet into plank. Pretty simple. And it transfers all your weight into your upper body and requires some basic coordination. I want you to notice something as we go from this position here, both hands down, 
One arm is more supporting the weight than the other. We're gonna fire this leg around the side and shoot both, just back to plank. This is simple stuff. All we're doing is like a half a body turn. But watch the hands, thinking about the subtle detail and nuance. Instead of being in this position where we go and move our hands three or four times, how about just lifting this arm and then putting it straight down where we want to. Okay, so from here, and both hands are on a line squared, okay? So controlling your body in space, shifting it to where it needs to go. Fourth move is gonna be one you hate. It's basic though. Now most people come in and they're pretty tight for too many push-ups and too much bench press. Now don't get me wrong, there's value in those. Push-ups and even bench press can even be done as full body training. I just don't think they're as valuable as people think they are, especially compared with some of this more sophisticated training. But we don't expect you to be an expert right off the bat. The fact that you're here researching and listening is gonna send you way further in your training than most others. I'm actually gonna show you how I warm this up because like I've said in other videos, a lot of bench press tightened up my shoulders big time. It's a process, it's been a process for opening up shoulders and gaining flexibility in order to be able to do hollow backs and aerial spinning handstands, AKA air tracks or air flares. So yeah, I'm no stranger to having to work through flexibility and mobility issues as well. So just warming this up, instead of just going through the whole thing. I'm not gonna show you what the whole thing is yet, but we're gonna start with just a hip lift like this. Quads, abs, lower back engaging, fingers pointed towards the feet, pushing up and warming up, trying to straighten the arms out. Also a wrist, all right? So you see very quickly how just a couple of basic moves is full body training adventure. <laughs> You're going through so many things as you assemble just a couple of basic moves together. Whenever we're training in a, in a very basic compartmentalized way, like here's our cardio, here's our weightlifting, blah, 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 blah. And then you put the person, and I've seen this numerous times, you take a person and you put them in an athletic environment or just a human movement environment, just running, jumping, rolling, climbing, situation, it's almost like you've ever tried to write with the opposite hand. Like I'm right-handed, and if I want to try to write with my left hand, it's kind of the same situation. And it's like these lifts and this cardio, these yoga poses, but anything outside that paradigm, even a certain sport, a person plays a sport for 10 or 20 years, they can only execute that way, and then it, it's like kind of fumbling around in other areas. And I personally don't like that. I want to be able to at least be somewhat sufficient, whatever it is that, that I want to do. So that's kind of the way that I look at it, kind of the way that I train. I think the acrobatic training is really versatile and kind of gives you that foundation for a lot of other things, which is pretty cool. So then from here, let's just go with a hand turn and then open it up. So you'll notice I Step at the same time that I do the hand movement. And then from the side view, step and hand turn like this. And I'll watch this because of the tight shoulders. I can still do this, okay? But I put weight into my knees a little bit. So here we go. Hand turn over. Down a little bit more smoothly. So when we get back around, we'll be in with both hands on the ground. And think about this, we've used everything so far, from your Achilles and the stance work to your sternocleidal mastoid in your neck, holding up your head while working through the bridge. Shoulders, quads, wrists, everything else. So weak links will be exposed, and that's what we want. You don't wanna watch a video where you do everything perfect. You wanna grow as a human and in all areas of life, building strength as well as balance. Okay, we're gonna pause for the fifth move. All right, think about this. The first two moves I showed you are actually one single move, just dropping to snake. The third move I showed you is actually two moves combined into one. And the bridge twist is two halves, opening the shoulders and then closing the shoulders. And all of that is followed by a roll to a stick position 
using your core and legs plus your upper body. Lower back problems, holding a hollow hold in your lower back, just rocking, holding the knees, having a little bit of curvature in the lower spine. Your lumbar shouldn't move a whole lot, but you should be able to roll just like that. Just rolling and rocking in this direction without the kerplunk on the ground of boom, 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 of your back being so flat that there's immobility and that rolling feels like a thump or like you're gonna hurt something, okay? You should be able to do this all the way up to your neck, all right? Not anything that's gonna hurt anybody, but it's just a normal movement. Think about children. Children can move in all of these directions because the body is naturally flexible and pliable and that should be maintained. It shouldn't be expected that through aging, the opposite becomes the norm. Brittle, worn out, ready to crack. So our roll, our roll is just hands in front, feet, knees staying together. Core is gonna compress, head goes down. And then we're right back to a stick position. But start thinking about it this way. All of these connect into one move, a Dyna combo. But here's what people will do. They'll say, okay, I'll try a little of this after such and such. That's not the point. The point is to recognize that mainstream fitness is cookie cutter, watered down, fragmented ABCs that get people majoring in the minors, arguing about petty minutia. It's the same in education and other institutions for that matter. The point here is that this is the game. It's the athleticism that transfers over to all of life. Whether you apply these principles to snowboarding, dance, martial arts, or mastering power batics, it's training holistically, full body, and making that the 80% of what you do that's gonna transform your life. One final note to help you. A common mistake people will make is go and attempt to try what we do as basics on their own and have a bad experience and discontinue their efforts. When it boils down to user error and decades of doing a lot of things wrong. Let's say you have back pain, knee pain, shoulder pain, ankle pain, or wrist pain. I guarantee you this is gonna flare it up. It is also precisely training for this level of movement that fixes it all. I understand more than you know. The biggest key is mindset. Your mentality actually fixes everything. You fix that, you fix the rest. Couple mindset with full body training done daily and sky's the limit.